All right, here we go with another demo disc. Now this is the Squaresoft demo disc that came with the game Tobal Number no. One, and this is most famous for having the Final Fantasy VII demo, limited play Final Fantasy VII demo. Let's go straight into that some bitch. No sense in beating around the bush with this one. Now this was a game that. Tobal number one was a game that I had purchased after I played... Fi oh, there's text here. That's right, there was text here, wasn't there? A little bit of backstory to the game. Avalanche. I guess I gotta provide a little bit of backstory, because you're not really gonna understand what the hell's going on, because this demo takes place during the actual beginning of the game with the bombing of the Mako power plant, or the Mak Makuro plant, <laughs> that's what they're calling it here. I guess this was well before the game was actually released, so there were changes to translation that we didn't get to see until the final game. It's not that the translation, the final Western release was particularly good, but I guess it was a work in progress at this point. This was a stunning intro back when the game first released it, leading up to it. I mean, this was something unlike anything you had seen before. Of course, it's pre-rendered graphics. The um, other PlayStation games and other games for PC and whatnot did have pre-rendered graphics before this, but this showed a kind of level of fidelity unheard of. Now the character graphics are a little bit poor in comparison to environmental graphics and detail and all that kind of stuff, but still in this it was revolutionary. Now as I was saying, I had picked up the game Tobal Number 1 after I had already played the game Final Fantasy VII, so this demo was not something that I spent a whole lot of time playing, but I did go through it and I don't, I can't say I really remember the details of what's different about this. Yeah. Now the audio sounds a little different. Or does it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like the like, um, the samples are a little bit different, like, maybe they made a change for the time, or maybe I'm just misremembering the actual game. Okay, so we got Barret, Eris, and Cloud here. In the B, uh, of course, in the actual release game, at this point, you're only playing as Cloud. Eventually, Barret joins up, and you, uh, half, you halfway through the mission, Barret joins the party. But Eris isn't even introduced at this point in the game. In fact, we had seen her in the... We saw her in the intro cinematic, and then they zoom across the other side of the city, and that's where she is. Oh yeah, this definitely sounds different. Hmm. I imagine this text is different, but I don't remember the... Uh, I don't remember word for word what was said during this scene. Oh, there was no input for the name. You got the chance to name Cloud whatever you want. You don't hear, though. North Makaro Plant. <laughs> In the previous episode, I played through the demo for the game Final Fantasy VIII, which came on a PlayStation Magazine disc. And I made the point of noting that it was probably the perfect demo for that game, because it took a game that was probably not as... Uh, most people are of the opinion it's lower in quality than this one here. Oh, we got magic here. Let's do the bite. 
So it's a it's a game Lara most people would consider lower in quality than its predecessor or successor. But it managed to put such a strong foot forward that it really got people excited. Because the beginning of Final Fantasy VIII is surprisingly dull. He doesn't throw you right into the action the way Seven does. So they chose a section of the game which takes place an hour or two in, which is a good, exciting, like, beginning and a great demo. But in this game, they actually have the first mission, or like the first thing you do in the game. You see that cinematic, then you're in on this. Really got going. It's something I definitely appreciate about that. It doesn't dick around with showing you some action. And then it takes some time to slow down and introduce characters and all that kind of stuff. But this is truly the beginning of the game here. Oh, there's no space after the comma. <laughs> So they do call it Mako, or Mako, or whatever. Using this weird hunk of scrap machinery. That's pretty sure that's not what he says in the. How do I get through here? Oh, all right. He's gonna shrug. <laughs> all right, I think. Barrett would have joined the party by this point. Hey look, I got... oh look, that's different. That... the actual release game doesn't have that little option when you go to choose how many you're going to attack with your magic spells. It just has arrows pointing to the enemies, or fingers pointing to the enemies. Oh, there's no victory fanfare. The battle music just continues on through. That's a bit of a different difference. Now there was a treasure chest over here. And of course it's not frozen. And I got myself in front of the battle. Oh, okay, we got guard and change. This should kill everyone, right? No, it didn't. Wow. Those things are supposed to be weak against lightning, aren't they? Oh, shit. Oh, when I choose it, it like sort of defaults back to the last choice I had made. I don't think the final game does that. I could be misremembering. It's been a few years since I played the original Final Fantasy VII. I've been playing the remake. Well, I mean, I finished playing the remake a while ago. But I'm still uploading my video series on it. This music does feel different. There's no space after the comma again. Cloud's eyes look a little bit weird there, like they're too close together. And he's got eyebrows. I don't remember. Uh, maybe they're in the final game. He looks a little bit weird, though. Cloud is definitely a dickhead in the this demo version as well as the final game. Cloud is a bit of a dickhead. Oh, that's a lot of these things. I figure, and I don't know how many other people, and I've mentioned this before, I don't know how many other people have the same idea that I do about this. But I think Cloud's sort of asshole persona that he 
has in the early parts of the game. And that's, like, really the very early parts of the game. There's barely any experience points gained. We're never gaining a level during this. The ass asshole persona he has is largely the result of his kind of mental brainwashing kind of thing that he's had. Because it's... Spoiler alert for a 20-something-year-old game. Cloud isn't really Cloud. He is a sort of a emotional construct of Cloud. Though. He is the actual person. He is the guy named Cloud that, like, Tifa knew as a child and all that kind of stuff. But his entire personality is sort of based off of what uh, he expects people to think of him. So, he's supposed to be the cool, calm, and confident soldier, so when he runs into Barrett, Barrett dislikes him, so there's some animosity going back and forth between the two, and that leads to some, uh... Let's see if we can do this again. Leads the Cloud acting like an asshole to him. Then, when Cloud eventually runs into Aerith, who has a different uh, idea of what his mind, what he should be like, he starts to act differently. Now, these things are a little bit tougher. Physical attacks it is, or so Aerith doesn't have Aerith's whatever, doesn't have good physical attacks. Our characters are way overpowered in this demo. Oh, it was... it absorbed those ice attacks. I mean, we're taking damage, but not really. We're just kind of, uh... screwing around a bit. I believe... now, I... I definitely thought this before, but I think maybe I'm going to have to see to make sure. But I don't think the Guard Scorpion was the boss at the end of this demo. I think it was the, the Sweeper, the two machine gun having robot. The... Similarity between this and the Final Fantasy VIII demo. Oh, that sound is different. Oh, they got this music playing again. Not the boss music. Yep, yep, it's a sweeper. The, um... Uh, the alarm's not going off yet. In the Final Fantasy VIII demo that I played in the previous episode, there was a... Thing, like, instead of having Selfie in the party, they had Renoa. Now, that makes sense because Renoa is a more important character in the story and you want to introduce players to her, but she's not present in the actual mission, in the actual game, so she stands there and she doesn't say anything. In this, Aerith, Aerith isn't, uh, isn't actually present in this section of the game, so... She doesn't say anything, and because the characters don't follow the lead character along in during the, uh, the overworld kind of thing, she doesn't even appear outside of battle. So it's uh, so they definitely. Oh, that's weird. Heavy shot. That's awesome. It's bolt, you, bolt to you. An oddly powerful spell to have this early in the game. Is it dead yet? Hit Cloud, he has a limit break coming up. Oh, nope. Oh, yep, we got it. Three minutes? You were on crack! 
Oh my god. I had like 10 minutes in the final game, something like that. There's no timer on the screen. Oh, that's weird. He teleported up those... that ladder. Um, maybe I'm just not going to have random encounters on the way back. What's Jesse doing all the way up there? He's supposed to be, like, here. <laughs> oh, I do have random encounters. Well, there's no timer on the screen, so maybe the timer doesn't, uh doesn't run on when we are in battle. Cloud special technique available, you mean his limit break? It's a weird way of wording it, but alright. I guess it gets the point across, doesn't it? Oh, cross slash. I can do cross slash. How is that thing still alive? Holy shit. Kill him, damn it. <laughs> I only have three minutes to get away. <laughs> Barrett special technique available. Does that mean he's got a new... Oh, no. There we go. Barret's actually taking quite a bit of damage. I'm getting ethers, but like, how the hell am I supposed to use them? And I can't open the menu. They moved Jesse further down. You didn't have to run up this ramp in order to uh, in order to get her. And. I mean, in the final game, you can't open the doors to escape if Jesse isn't with you. So you had to collect it. There's another change here. Down this way. Freaking, for some reason, Wedge is down here. <laughs> oh, that's Biggs. That's Biggs, never mind. Two minutes remaining. And, bit, and you, I probably can't get through the door without Biggs. He can run faster than us. In the... I, for some reason, I always remember that as him being down there for no reason. And they, uh, they got rid of that. You didn't have to rescue Biggs, although Jesse's leg was stuck in the final game. I guess maybe they figured they were beating that drum a little bit too hard of having to rescue everybody on your way out, so they got rid of one of them. Could've just left the door open, you know. Okay, it's definitely been more than three minutes. We should be dead by now. Oh, Barrett knocked Jesse down. What an asshole. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, it would have been nicer if they had shown the entire cinematic as explosion over the city. It looked really nice in the final game. I guess I did have to hold something back, though. Alright, so that was the only demo. The rest of these are videos, but Final Fantasy Tactics. This is a game that I have played, although the original Final Fantasy Tactics I didn't play. The, uh, the version of it released for the PSP, it's called War of the Lions or something like that. That was the version that I played, and I guess from what I understand it's probably the same game, only with a couple extra little features added. It's alright. I mean, as far as turn-based strategies go, it's not my cup of tea. But, you know, it is something, and I guess there is a story behind it. Although, honestly, I don't know it, because I did play through too much of it. So, like a tactical RPG. 
People really love it, though. It's one of those people think some people think it's the best uh, Final Fantasy on PlayStation One. Bushido Blade. I'm not sure I remember what this game is. I know it's a game that I, I don't think I ever played. But... I'm not even sure I know what I'm uh, looking at here. The animations are terrible. Is this a fighting game? I'm gonna show actual gameplay here. You're gonna have an idea of what it is where... Okay, so... This is gameplay here. Okay, I think I remember this now. It may have been a game that I had played on a, uh, like a demo kiosk in a Funko Land. But it's supposed to have been like an ultra-realistic fighting game where the first hit tends to kill. So you had to be very cautious with how you attacked and all of that. I'll look into it later, just for my own, my own interest, but I think it was something that, like, interested people for a while, but now no one really cares. Saga Frontier. Saga series is a series I never touched. I've never gotten into this. Although I imagine it's got its own, and has its own fan base. There were a lot of, especially in the PlayStation 1 era, where sort of like the golden age of JRPG, a lot of these games I just never really managed to touch. Games were expensive and I just couldn't get that many of them. So, a lot of these games that I know, like, I really should have tried to get because I know they would have offered a lot of gameplay for a dollar value, because RPGs tend to be long. I just never managed to pick up. I didn't realize that Saga was a square game. I'll definitely look into this, though, to see if this is something worth playing. I mean, I, I guess I'm really only going to do it if it has a like a large following. following. Because if it doesn't have that, it's just probably not very good. <laughs> So was that it? Eh? That's this last video. Oh look, I got control of cloud here. That's an animation I don't remember ever seeing in the game. And running. Alright, that's uh Alright, well then that's the uh, Square Soft uh, preview demo disc. I'm sure I, I don't remember the name of the title of this disc, but I'll put it in the title of the video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, I seem to recall there being a demo disc for the game Xenogears that I picked up at some point, well after I'd gotten the actual game. I'm going to try and, and dig that one up and make that as part of my next video. Anyway, thanks for watching.